on this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock. We cover the latest on what everyone in Washington is TikToking about. I can accept failure. Everyone fails at something. But I can't accept not trying. Michael Jordan. Michael Scott. Pragavar Raghavan, probably. <laughs> Google's plan for a third-party cookie phase-out is still half-baked. Oh, on today's show. Welcome, you are listening to Welcome. Marketing O'Clock. Just stay tuned. Digital marketing news, but let's get specific. Digital ads, SEO, and analytics. Social media and more. Yeah. Pretty much everything that'll make your website perform. With new shows every Friday. Every Friday. We give you the news with sass and puns and definitely high takes. Hot takes. Thank you for tuning in. Hey. Hey. You know what time it is. What time is it? It's officially marketing o'clock. Settle in, sit back, keep it locked. Hey there, I'm Christine Zernhelm. AKA Shep. I'm Jess Bud. And I'm Greg Finn. And it is officially marketing o'clock. Here on April 26th, 2024. And before we get into all of the digital marketing news this week, what is happening with you, Shep? I feel like we should say hi to our new listeners. I'm sure there's so many who discovered us this past week. How did they discover us? After seeing our faces and names in lights in Times Square, New York City. That was real? Yes. I could not believe it was <laughs> I real. I still can't believe that it's real. Yeah, there was our cover art mm -hmm. for the podcast in the Big Apple. Mm -hmm. yeah. Paid for by the incredibly generous and enraged sometimes about Google Ads, Anthony Higman. Higman! That was really nice of you, Anthony. Yeah. Thank you. We love marketing clock! Why? Like, really <laughs> embarrassed you. that my face was that big, but it was really, really nice. It was very nice. Yeah, it was really cool. And Taylor cool. Swift was on it later in the week. Like, what a time to be on the billboard. I mean, not many people, more people are talking about o'clock than Swift. You I think, think so? For sure. So. For sure. Yeah. At least in this room. My mom was really excited about it, so. The Taylor one or us? <laughs> us. Oh. Thank you, Anthony. You made her day. Yes, thank you. What's new with you, Greg? Unfortunately, I am here, Shep, to serve you with not one, but two different lawsuits. Oh, wow. I have you for slander against me and my good name on the show last what week. What did I say? You said that I was sick okay. <laughs> and I couldn't come in to do the show. Mind you, I said, Shep, I will do the show with you. Please let me know. It was six o'clock. I was already up. I was working. I worked the entire day. I did It's New with Barry Schwartz, uh, Morty, and Crystal. I was completely working. You said I was off. So that is verbal slander. I did not say you were off. I said you were sick. You were sick. No, I, I did. Something I, did was I, wrong. Did I not tell you I'm coming in to do the show with you? You wanted to podcast remote because you didn't want to infect anyone because you were sick. Read the slack. Oh, boy. You have some weird thing with being sick, so you wouldn't even say that. Correct. You were like, I'm feeling a bit off. So what I do did, you try? So what was wrong? I felt weird. <laughs> I didn't have a fever. I tested multiple times for Bruno 19. I didn't have it. What did I say to you? What day was it? It was a March. Wednesday. This is Wednesday, the day you're besmirching my good name. But prop shouldn't be around a pregnant person. So I'll stay home today. Listen, I am not the pregnant person. Keep reading. <laughs> Or, Shep, I can come in and do it with you on the opposite side of the desk. Up to you. You think I'm going to be like, get in your car and drive? Yeah, I like to do things. Are we going to say anything say... about this pregnant person comment? Because <laughs> no, I'm really uncomfortable gonna, right now. We're not, we're not addressing it. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I didn't want to. In, we have, in both offices are people that are with child. And I did not want to. If I had a chance that like I got a positive on a test, I didn't want to be around him. But I said... I will come in and do the show with you. Let's go. Nobody thinks it's like a bad thing. Nobody's sitting okay. around like, okay, okay. Greg Finn, I got his good name has been <laughs> sullied. And you know what? I'll tell you something about your good name, Greg. Yeah. It's yours alone to disgrace. That's what Taylor Swift says. Whoa. Oh, oh, okay. Well, you know what? Whoa. Thomas Assel is on LinkedIn. They're like, I hope you get better. It's like, dude, I'm, I'm working this whole time. Oh. So that's- Nobody first said off, you weren't first working. Off, you said I was, uh, I was sick day. I did not. I just said you weren't on the podcast. Tables. Roll the tape back. You may have noticed the elephant in the room. Greg Finn is not here. Nope. He's a little under the weather today. Took a very rare sick day. Took a very rare sick day. Sick day. Boom. Okay. Now, I am hiring Selino for that one, and I'm also <laughs> going after you for libel. 
for taking my good word out of context in written form. And I'm going to hire the Barnes firm. So you're totally screwed. I got Selena and Barnes, Barnes on this. Yep. Because in Slack, I was trying to make a statement saying, I something fell off with me. <laughs> and really... I wasn't sick. He's really upset. Are you the pregnant person? I don't want to be around pregnant people. So what Shep did is cut this <laughs> clip that just said, I don't want to be around pregnant she people. Did. And she put it to the entire company. Me saying I don't want to be around pregnant people. First of all, wait. Be nice. Wait, it's very important. The comment did not have a name associated with it. But we it all was knew. just a quote with no context, with no name. That is fair. That is Liable. correct. That's I would right. not have said Liable. you said that it. That's correct. You better lawyer up. You better <laughs> lawyer it up. I don't have no. a lawyer. <laughs> okay. I don't either, but I do have a baby. And if Barnes is your lawyer, okay. <laughs> oh, wow, we're going to talk about it. Yay! Yay! And are you feeling off? No, I feel fine, but you're thankfully, welcome. You're you know, welcome. yeah, Greg wasn't here last week, so we'll see. But no, I don't know. We haven't like been hiding it. We just haven't really talked about it. There hasn't been an opportunity. This right. is a great segue into go. the fact that I'm like almost, well, halfway there. Yep. So. She's got a cute little baby bump. Very exciting times ahead. Thank you so much. It's a girl. <laughs> And getting into the news this week, breaking news, everyone. Google is once again delaying the third-party cookie demise. Mm. So this is an article from Digiday from Seb Joseph, and it opens with, Google is delaying the end of third-party cookies in its Chrome browser. Again, and in other unsurprising developments, water (laughs) remains wet. (laughs) I like that. Great. I also want to point out, The image for this article is from Ivy Lou, and we have been talking about the phase out of third-party cookies for four years now, and this is the best one yet. Not an easy task. It's a beautiful chocolate chip cookie melting into the sunset for the phase out. I really like it, Ivy. Keep up the good work. And Google did not outline a more specific timetable besides saying that they're hoping it's going to happen in 2025 at this point. So Fingers crossed. Yeah. They're hoping... If you don't have a plan for this, it's been four years. Like nobody's mm. taking it seriously because they keep pushing it back. But yeah, the, the term "hoping for 2025" does not bode well yeah. for 2025. Because if you're keeping track, they did originally announce this in January 2020. We have been talking about it for four years. Wow, it's really been that long. The announcement was made Tuesday this week ahead of a quarterly report from Google and the, quote, ever watchful watchful UK Competition and Markets Authority, or CMA. And Google then posted a statement on its website for the Privacy Sandbox, and it says, we recognize that there are ongoing challenges relating to reconciling divergent feedback from the industry, regulators, and developers, and will continue to engage closely with the entire ecosystem. It is also crucial that the CMA has this sufficient time to review all evidence, including results from industry tests, with the CMA has asked market participants to provide by the end of June. Given both of these significant considerations, we will not complete third-party cookie deprecation during the second half of Q4. So maybe Q5. It doesn't even say Q5. Maybe 2025. (laughs) It doesn't even say that in that statement, though. So we'll have to wait and see. Just kick those cookies down the road. Yep. Just keep them cooking until <clears throat> mm-hmm. they burn. Okay. And I am going to start with news from the Google search boss, Prabhakar Raghavan. And he told employees to prepare for a different market reality because, quote, things are not like they were 15 to 20 years ago, end quote. And honestly, this this show is one of those classic uh, Raghavan days here at Marketing Clock where we just have him dominating at least the first half of this show. Um, This is something, when I read this, I reread it three times. This looks like something, if you put it on like Silicon Valley, like a scripted TV show, you'd be like, this is too on the, this is too fake. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to read this from CNBC. And apparently they got like audio recording of what he said. He said, CNBC goes, wearing a hoodie with the words, quote, we use math. Can I have a hoodie that says I don't use math? End quote. We will make I don't use math hoodies coming soon. So he said he had a quote, a hoodie wearing we use math on the front. <laughs> Why I love did the we? Say, like you're uh, one person in a shirt. What about math guys? They should have called Jess Bud for the tagline. Seriously. Okay. And this is about a looming, like, coming crisis. People need to work more. People are going to potentially be laid off. There needs to be more output. It's the rallying cry. We're about to go start the game. We need to go win. Okay. 
And so search bo uh, boss, uh, Prabhakar Ravagan, had an important message for employees, but first he wanted to settle them, settle in and get them comfortable. Quote, grab your boba teas, <laughs> end quote, Ravagan told the crowd, gathered in a theater at the company's headquarters in Mountain View, California. I don't know about you all, but we worked long and hard to get our pay up to a level where we could make a decent living. Can you imagine... I, maybe I'm like a toxic masculine guy. I think of like Sparta, like 300. You're like kicking people down wells and like getting dirt on your face. I'm not up there with a hoodie that says we use math being like, get your boba tees. <laughs> get your boba tees? Get your boba tees. Like that. It's also like the, in a way, the most googly thing I've ever heard because they probably have them on site. Yeah, like you, are up they under everyone's tea. chair? Like, did, I forgot to yeah. bring mine. Like, I'm literally like, it's very specific. Huff those smelling salts. Get your pre-workout. Where's your protein? Let's go. What does your shirt say? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it went on to say a whole bunch of uh, issues that that are a front of some of the Google efforts here. And he says, quote, it's not like life is going to be hunky dory forever. Ooh, and, Kathy Hilton reference. And he says, <laughs> over 35 minutes, uh, Ravagan peppered his reality check address with sports metaphors and rallying cries. Much That's like, what you're looking for, right? your bubble tees. Yes. <laughs> so I, I just picture him being out there and be like, skate to where the puck's going, not to where it is. You miss 100% of the shots you don't think, blah, blah, blah. But it's even well, better. Well, it's like DTC Twitter last week. We will not go <laughs> yeah. quietly into the night. But one of the quotes he said is, if there's a clear and present market reality, we need to twitch faster, like the athletes twitch faster. What is twitch? <laughs> it's like twitchy. Like if you're an athlete, it's twitchy. You're like shifty. The athletes like do it. We yeah. should too. <laughs> yeah. There's a shirt. With your boba, boba tees because we use math. Twitch real fast. I just, I look at, I just, how can you <laughs> put that picture in your mind and laugh hysterically? I am laughing. Okay. And then he goes on to say, people come to us because we're trusted. They may have the new gizmo out there that people like to play with, but they still come to Google to verify what they see because it is a trusted source and becomes more critical in this era of generative AI, even though all they're doing is pumping generative AI. They're also adding uh, teams in India and Brazil, so they're closer to those markets. And it is not just a continuation of the, some of those layoffs from 2023, uh, apparently the last all hands meeting was three months ago. And for some, it felt like three years, according to CNBC. And he said, we had a lot to go in those last three months, some really high highs, not really sure what those are. And then really low lows. <laughs> One of the lowest low, according to CNBC was when they put out the AI image generator that went bananas with the way it was doing things. There was a lot of, uh, racist stuff in there, things that they had to pull it down. So I assume that's one of the low lows, albeit there's probably many low lows with the DOJ and everything like that. Um, and then one thing I thought was funny, he praised the teams that were working on Gemini, um, and he's that that used to be like the Bard team as well. And he said that they've stepped up from working 100 hours a week to 120 hours a week to, cor to correct Google's image recognition tool in a timely manner. And they fixed 80% of the issues, which... Like, first off, is this human working 120 hours a week? <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of hours. Are I don't think that's that many hours. Week? Yeah, I don't know because I don't use math. And then it's like, if it's like we your do. generative AI team and you're only working 120 hours, that's not a lot. Yeah, for the, for that's the whole like team, three people working yeah. a 40 hour work week. Um. Anyway, it went on to say. And to talk about how well the Bard team did being nimble, they said that the, real, the realization was, gosh, if we had thrown 2,000 engineers at these projects, we wouldn't have got it done. So to me, that, again, is more looming, like, potentially layoffs when I hear that. Like, hey, a, a small, nimble team can do a lot of stuff if we had 2,000 people on this. A, who are those 2,000 people that suck so bad? You can't, you do worse. And then, you know, like, maybe layoffs is, is what I read out of that. But um Obviously, they're really looking to be agile. Seems like they're trying to get back to the googly ways, which we'll talk about in the take of the week. Grab your boba teas because we thought this wouldn't happen, and it's happening. TikTok could actually be banned if not sold into U.S. ownership. This is hot news. We are recording here on Wednesday. So a bill 
passed a few weeks ago in the House of Representatives, and then it just got approved by the Senate yesterday as part of a larger foreign aid package. That was the bill, again, saying that they wanted to ban TikTok or have it sold. Um, It was pushed through, like I said, to the Senate, and the final vote on the bill in the Senate was 79 to 18 in favor. So again, it was part of a larger bill. There was a lot more that they were voting on, but this TikTok ban is part of it. And so since it was approved by the House and the Senate, it then went to the president's desk and he signed it this morning, Question. Wednesday. Do yeah. you think uh, the current president of the United States knows what TikTok is? Oh, no. <laughs> Should we go there? <laughs> just wondering. I'm, I'm sure he's yeah. seen clocks. Um, so. I mean, to be fair, it's better than Truth Social. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I don't like anybody. So whatever. <laughs> I don't like it. That's, that's, that's a T-shirt. I should I put like that, anybody. That, I yeah. should put that in the channel too. Would that be blasphemy? That would be libel part two. You just blasphemy. said it. I don't like anybody. See, but you're taking it out. Of the, the, <laughs> you're missing key content. And then you should combine them together. I don't like pregnant people. Yes. Just kidding. Try to do that one. <laughs> okay. So what does this really mean? Because it's not just an outright ban, right? ByteDance will have nine months, I guess, as of today, because it was signed, uh, to sell TikTok to someone that is U.S.-based. And if that doesn't happen, the app will then be banned here in the United States. There's also the possibility of getting an extension if it looks like the deal is moving forward and the president feels confident in it. So we shall see (laughs) what happens. There's obviously, if if ByteDance does sell TikTok. There's a lot of questions about how the app might change because they own the algorithms. Will it still work as well? Will people like it? I don't know. Um, we don't. Nothing ever happens smoothly, so it'll be interesting to keep an eye on things, and obviously we'll be here even if TikTok won't. So we'll keep you all posted, but officially signed today here, people. The clock is ticking, and it's just as long as it takes to just date a child. Now it's time for this week's Take of the Week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. This week's take of the week is a doozy. It's from Ed Zertron from where's your ed dot at. And the name of the article is the man who killed Google search. Ba, ba, ba. I, I think there's some bias in here. Everything I'm about to say is alleged from Ed here. But it is a fantastic breakdown of almost the movement away from really focusing in on providing sound organic results and moving more towards revenue. And in Ed's article, there is a clear hero who is Ben Gomes, the head of search for Google for a long time. And According to Ed, Ben had refused to make Google search worse for a profit and would be argumentative with many people at Google. And I understand that they're a business and they need to make money, but that is the hero in Ed's story. And Ed says that Ben Gomes fought against people like Jerry Dishler, who is most known for his Shake the Cushions quote, um, and uh, Prakabar Ravagan, the head of ads, who were arbitrarily demanding people search more on Google. And privately, Gomes was worried that search was getting too close to the money, end quote. Of course, we know that uh, Pragabavar has now led all of search, not just ads, and has sort of replaced Ben on that. Additionally, some of the reporting from Ed implies that Google specifically added some bloat that would increase queries quite easily in the short term in negative ways to the user like turning off spell correction, turning off ranking improvements, or placing refinements or labels all over the page. And apparently Ben was very anti this, um, where many other people were looking to just cr- crank up the searches and crank up the re- uh, the revenue. Okay, so Ed goes on to say, Ben Gomes is a hero who dedicated a good chunk of his life to Google search in that Prakabar Ravagan's previous job was running search and ads at Yahoo from 2005 to 2012, taking it from 30.4% of the search market to replacing its search tech with Bing. (laughs) Yeah, this is a bit of a hit piece. I'm just reporting on the article. Um, There was a code yellow where it looked like searches were down and 
there was a big shakeup, and apparently from that code yellow, it might have spurred the takeover from Prakabar Ravagan to the head of Google search with Jerry Dishler, famously known from Shake the Cushions, quote, as the place of uh, the head of ads, and then Gomes was relegated to the SVP of education at Google, according to Zertron. Additionally, it seemed like things didn't go that well. Zertron said, every single article I read about Gomes' tenure spoke of a man deeply ingrained in the foundation of one of the most important technologies ever made, and goes on to say, and when given the keys to the kingdom, the ability to elevate Google search even further, he was... Sharp, can you help me with that, that term there? Rat? Oh my gosh, who would say such a thing? What is the term? Rat F. I am not saying that I'm a lady. He was rat effed <laughs> by a series of rotten What does careers. that mean? What? Trying to please Wall Street led by Prakavar Ravagan. <laughs> Just because Taylor released her most explicit album yet does not mean that I'm going to be my smirch. Kid, not allowed in my house. Not in this house. <laughs> Not in this house. You should see the face. You we should get Ed. Ed on our next album. No. We're talk about effing rats. That is not the vibe. That is so disturbing. Rat effing? Yes. No? Okay. So on X, Zertron said, Propagar Ravagan is a career failure. A man who has fallen upwards into the most important job in software and since become the head of search in 2020. Google has become the ultra profitable, increasingly less useful site. Ragavan is a villain. It goes on to say more and more and more. Goes on to talk about Sunar Bachai and the fact that he worked at McKinsey, who helped uh, Purdue Pharmaceuticals sell a ton of Oxycontin. I, again, there seem like there's agendas here to it, but it made a ton of sense. And then there were also really good comments over, I think it's on Y Combinator, where you can see the kind of the difference between some of the old school engineers and how they were really hesitant for machine learning and AI to creep in because you can't like actually control a lot of the results in the SERPs and that that's kind of got moved away for clicks, profit and all that. So definitely a great read if you're interested. I cannot confirm or deny how true any of it is, but if you are looking for uh, something to entertain you, this is the thing. Thank you, Ed. Now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. I See Why Am I, people. This is something you just might not have seen. Maybe something that you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. I See Why Am I, people. We have something new for you. Well, not fully, but a new part of it. We have mentioned the last couple of weeks a source where some of our stories has been the new, are we calling it a web show, a podcast? I don't know. Web show. It's new, and this is brought to you by Search Engine Roundtable and the team over at Wix. So it's it was always Morty, Crystal, and Barry. And then after like a week, they just brought Greg Finn on. I gave him a compliment saying, I like the show. Barry said, do you want to come on the show? And I said, sure, if you need me. And then I somehow got added to the show. Yeah. And it's been fun. It's really fun to listen to. Thanks. Great source for daily updates. Make sure if it's a Friday, you turn into this, tune into this show first, but then you can listen to it. There so, are no Friday shows. No oh, Friday per- show. yeah. wow. Because yeah. Greg's busy on Friday with this that we record on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. if you want to hear more cracking Wise with the news each day, I'm on there talking, trying to carry the page side yeah. of things. And it's over on the Search Engine Roundtable YouTube channel. And I think it's featured in the Learning Hub too, but that's always where I go. And it's nice. I can talk about paid stuff yeah like okay. you don't really get to do that i know ever i love it but you you can give your little opinions on the organic stuff but you don't have to like yeah worry yourself with things that all my opinions yeah. are like all you organic people are absolutely <laughs> <laughs> getting rat <effed> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. now it's time for this week's pew pew lightning round at this point in the show we split up our content into three parts paid <laughs> organic and social First up in the paid universe this week, we have a story coming from our new search engine land paid media lead. Is that what we're calling yeah, her? Yeah, absolutely. The Queen Anu. Extraordinaire. Yes. Woo-hoo. This is my first story from her. So welcome, Anu Works. Excited to share your news every week. So this story is about how Google is developing a too hot proxy to enhance privacy for Chrome users. And Anu says, for ad location targeting, advertisers will only have the option to target regions designated by Google, which won't be accurate This is if this goes through. Great statement. Which won't be accurate. That's yeah. 
It's the truth. Yeah. Because Google Chrome will use proxy to connect to websites, it will mask users' identities, meaning advertisers cannot distinguish between genuine and bot traffic. And Google is increasing its collection of uniquely valuable location data, which could increase advertisers' costs. And again, this is only for Chrome users. And Julie tweeted about it, asking a couple questions. So Ginny, our ads liaison, replied. So I just want to make sure I read that. She said, hi, Julie. To clarify, Chrome has not made any recent updates to its IP protection proposal. You can find more information on geolocation here. And she shares a GitHub article that was Anu's source from the story. She says, further, advertisers continue to have control over which general areas they target, including countries, cities, or privacy-safe radius targeting around their businesses. In Google Ads, IP ad addresses can help indicate which customers seem to be using a device that connects to the internet in your targeted region, but it's not the only signal used. As always, geo-targeted campaigns must adhere to strict thresholds where minimum area and minimum user counts are met to protect people's privacy. So if you're worried about that, she has an article to the Google Help Center too, but welcome Anu. It's exciting to have you here. (laughs) Next up from Mike Ryan, he found new display ads formats for PMAX. So he was building his asset group and it came up with a list of new display ad formats. And he says, new display formats for PMAX will open up a lot more inventory. This bolsters performance max's position in the voluntary migration of Google display ads to PMAX. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to figure out what the heck is going on after that. And he said heck, like I would. Mm -hmm. Then he says the Google Guy's script can help. So if you're looking for more information on that, at the Google Guy on X. Mike Rhodes, shout out. Next up from Thomas Assel on LinkedIn, he has a PMAX update. He says audience signal exclusions cannot be used in Google Ads PMAX campaigns anymore. He said earlier you could exclude people from your PMAX audience, for example, purchasers. Now a new alert shows that exclusions won't work anymore. So if you want to make sure you're excluding past purchasers, your best option at this point would be using that new customer acquisition goal, I guess. This actually makes sense to me. Like an audience signal is not an audience. Yeah. So then how... Could a negative audience signal be an actual negative audience? And none of it ever made sense. So yeah. this may, this actually I never use it. I just try to think of PMAX as something I can't control. <laughs> it's hard, but I try. <laughs> Next up from Barry Schwartz at Rusty Brick on X. Google Ads has a new establish in extension or assets. So there's these ads here and they have established in 2004 dates. Like For the company, I guess. That's cute. Check Mm. your automated asset settings because that's a weird one for me. I think it's it's cool. It's fine. Just roll it to everybody. Yeah. Don't just give it to limited people. I understand Moe's was established in 2004, but also like it got sold. Like it's not (laughs) the same thing. I just wish that that it came Moe's. Yeah, Moe's was established like (laughs) my whole life. I was raised on Moe's. Wow to it. But like give it to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And I just hope people can turn it off if they want to, because if it's like established in 2024, I might not want people to know that. (laughs) I'm brand new. Please use me. And Anthony Higman says, LOL, what is happening? Look at what is happening. I know. No caps. (gasps) Oh. I think he's listening to people. He was also replying to people who were guessing like that he was using a tool or something. And he said, nope, no tools here. He had proof. Another update. This one was spotted by Azeem, and Barry also has an article about this in Search Engine Roundtable. So at Azeem Digital is Azeem's handle. Google Ads is testing horizontal ad format for ads. This looks like a desktop result, and there's two, like, cards side by side, and I guess... It looks like you would, like, scroll right to left. This is very weird to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talked about it, and it's new. I'm sure you watched that one, Shep. (laughs) I think it's better than those weird cards I had that were vertical. If you remember those, they were like columns. These are like two in a row. Yeah. I said this is never going to see the light of day. This looks too much like an ad. We are never going to see the test rolled out. And in the words of Anthony Higman, LOL, what is happening? For social media today, YouTube has a new YouTube Select Shorts option that will enable brands to place ads alongside top shorts content in select categories. Those categories. Is that a prominence metric? Probably. Aren't those prominent metrics going to freak out about those cards side by side too? (laughs) So the categories are entertainment, beauty and fashion, lifestyle, food and recipes, gaming, and automotive. So according to YouTube, shorts are now viewed by 2 billion logged in users every month. 
This must have been a report after Taylor released her short. Taylor She's who? a short? Taylor Swift is in the shorts game. I'm team shorts now. Mm. Burn your slacks. Oh, oh, many, many, um, many listeners wanted to just do like a quick health check. I, I can't even. I hear, hear that like a lot of like Swifty Swifties disappointed in this album. Yeah. How are you? Who? Are you, Did you Swifties. listen to every single album? No, listen to the Post Malone one song. And the Swifties don't like it? No, I just heard the room like swirls on the internet. The criticism I heard is like it's all stuff she's done before. I don't care. Give me more of the same stuff. It's amazing. To be it's fair. It's so good. To be fair, the Florence and the Machine song, I think, it's like is nothing a I've ever heard before. She normally mm. does. Yes, even I, that one got me. A lot of people are out there saying there were not enough songs. There are way too many songs. Oh, it is so good. Mm. Like her screamy ballads. I just can't wait to see what she does with that at the concert. What is she going to remove? What is she going to oh. add? I'm on pins and needles. When's the concert? Do you have tickets? I do have tickets, thank God. It's in November in Toronto. Oh, good. <laughs> anyway, her short, and then she did like a shorts challenge, but she did this behind the scenes short of her making the But Daddy I Love Him music video and released it at the same time. It got so popular. I'm sorry, not But Daddy I Love Him. The Fortnite music video. Not, not a real Swift. Yeah, guys. <laughs> At the same time, so all these people looking for the Fortnite music video, like, watch the short first. Fortnite. And she's wearing this purple puffy workout skirt in the video, and I'm getting the skirt for Mother's Day. From yourself. Can I just tell you, like, <laughs> this is like, again, like, if I was 81 years old, this is, the language you're speaking doesn't make sense as me as a What you need to know adult. is I like shorts. Do you see how much joy it's bringing her, though? Like I No, it's bringing me joy how much joy she's <laughs> I know. Got. I feel like she's really happy over there. I'm happy you're happy. And I did listen to the whole album. I told you I would, and I did. I did it for you. Next up here, we're talking about ad strength again. I've been told this is the last time we're talking about it. We'll see. We'll see. This is an article from Ginny Marvin on Search Engine yeah. Land. She said it doesn't yeah. stop you from Ad strength deep dive. All your tough ad strength questions. So read this. Moral of the story, she says it is just a tool for your own reference. If you have a lot of assets in there, you should have good ad strength. If you have not a lot of pins, you should have better ad strength because then you have more assets and they can play around more. It is not used for the auction. That is the moral of the story. There's also a good little breakdown of ad strength versus quality score versus ad rank in here that I think is worth a read because um, it kind of made me feel like we shouldn't care about quality score anymore, which is sort of news to me. It's I always a diagnostic tool. I, I'm just I'm, – I'm team Julie on this. I mean obviously I'm like the conspiracy theorist that I probably – Ginny probably had to do work because of me and my conspiracy. Not not to sound like a like a self inflated person, but I couldn't. None of it made sense. Even this article she wrote, I understand what she's saying. It still doesn't make sense. And then the image of the, the Lewis Gray had, where you your impressions were stopped because your ad strength wasn't strong enough. It none of it, it is so hard to understand. Yeah, and I agree. I get it now. I can try to distill it for you. Ad strength is a diagnostic tool to show if you think you're going to get a click on an ad. It doesn't take conversions into effect. So as an advertiser, you shouldn't really care about ad strength, except for the fact that Google needs to make money. So if it thinks you're going to get a click, it's probably going to show you more. You're probably going to have more impressions, but it is not a causative fact. There's probably a correlation between the two, but the conversions are really what you should focus in on as an advertiser, not ad strength, unless it's making the fact that you can't get impressions because you have low ad strength, which probably means you're going to get low clicks is really the thing. And there's a gap between the strength and the clicks. Yeah. Of it. I'm interested to know if anyone sees that um, low impressions due to ad strength I warning that, anymore. The UI test. Remember mm -hmm. that? Send me a screenshot if you see it again. Yeah. Correction, by the way, search engine journal. I think you said search engine land. So if anyone's oh. looking for the article. Sorry about that. Search engine journal. Their ad strength is high. <laughs> luckily, luckily we do. <laughs> Speaking of <laughs> which, what's happening in organic? Okay, uh, Google is talking about hyphenated domains and them being good or bad. If you're worried about hyphenated domains, you're already losing. <laughs> Go to Search Engine Roundtable and you can check it out <laughs> over on Search Engine Roundtable as well. Barry Schwartz saw from Justin Mosbach a new button on 
Google business profiles called post. If you hit it, you can rate or review or add photos. I thought that's kind of a weird naming convention for it, like post. But post. that's how you post reviews, I guess, or post pictures. Okay, next up, by way of Drew Cannon from our Discord community at marketingclock.com, there is a new commitment to the safety by design generative AI principles that Google is going to be adhering to. It was developed by Thorn and All Tech is Human, and the existing work will help to prevent the creation, dissemination, and promotion of AI generated sexual or child sexual abuse and exploitation. So that's great to see. From Glenn Gabe at Glenn Gabe on X, perplexity's valuation has doubled from just three months ago. Perplexity AI raised $63 million at a $1 billion valuation, up from $520 million in January. I haven't used Perplexity until I saw Glenn's X post. Because you just trust Glenn? That's a big jump in like four yeah. months. Perplexity. I can't spell that. <laughs> I, I went to perplexity.com and I got nowhere. It's perplexity.ai. Perplexity is what SGE would be if it was grown up. Oh, it's good, you're saying. It is good. You have citations on everything. It is like a fully automated set of results. It didn't list Marketing Clock and my query, which was best digital marketing podcast. But when you put it in, you have lists of all the different things generated by AI. But they're just links right off to everything, which is like, I felt good when I went there. When I use SGE, I feel terrible. I feel like like I have way more questions than I have answers. Mm -hmm. Like, ask what the best Taylor Swift song is on the album. I'm going to ask when she broke up with Maddie Healy. Okay. So read it out live. June 5th, 2023. Okay. Which is, I've heard June. You know what that means? When I went to the Eras tour, it was peak. I can do it with a broken heart. She was singing up there with a broken heart for you. That breaks my heart. That breaks my heart that your heart got broken from Taylor Swift's heart. I just by the want Healy's her band. to be happy. <laughs> but look, like, look, the citations on there. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's like what you want SGE to be. Yeah. So cool. Go perplexity. Additionally, YouTube has now a most relevant display within your subscriptions tab. So what that means is if you interact with more videos, you're going to see more of that in your subscriptions rather than just what you subscribe to. So for me, when I go home, I'm probably going to see more Arcade Matt, Dude Perfect, and Mark Rober. There are also shorts for members only where you can upload a short that goes straight to your members if they subscribe to you. In the past, you had to upload it first. It will go to everybody. Then you had to change the setting. Now you can just go straight to your users. And Reddit's organic growth is skyrocketing. According to Lily Ray, this is like a big number where it is now in the top, I believe, five websites out there from search volume. Um, and apparently, Cura is tapering off in visibility. I'll get to the actual listing in a second here. Um, actually, let me just jump right on to it. It is now, according to Lily, the fifth biggest site in terms of SEO visibility in the, Google, in the uh, U.S. on Google in the past week. Um, Reddit was close to position 70 in July 2023 and has jumped wow. up and is now beating wow. Facebook. Wow. Invisibility. Okay, according to Reddit, there is somebody named the 190 IQ underscore equalizer, and they said the new YouTube layout tells you everything you need to know about Google. Apparently, the 190 IQ equalizer got the new YouTube layout, and they said it's obviously horrible, and the goal is for most people to read from left to right and immediately notice the suggested videos. Most people are used to reading comments after or during a video. Now by habit, when you start reading, you actually start watching suggestions, which is weird. I like the comment part. Like, I love YouTube for the comments. Mm -hmm. And the comments are extremely hard to read with new layout. I honestly mm -hmm. can't imagine reading them for more than 30 seconds without eye pain. The goal, while well, I want people to spend more time on YouTube to click on more suggested videos and watch more ads about other things. I'm not going to say that. Tables don't show those words that I skipped over. Okay, and from Glenn Gabe, he's saying, covering this again, people are wasting so much time disavowing when they don't need to. From John Mueller, Google has two decades of practice ignoring spammy links. There's no need to do anything with those links. People, Glenn is on the forefront of telling you not to disavow stuff unless you actually did something bad and you know you did something bad. Don't ever touch that. 
Glenn thinks it's going away. I'm going to predict Glenn is right with his prediction. Predicting his prediction is correct in 2024 here. It's a safe bet. All right. And from 9 to 5 Google, Google Podcast is shutting down for international users this June. Google tried to make a podcast product. Uh, big deal for Android users. Google couldn't figure out how to make it work. Google's bad at product, and it will be gone in mid to late June 2024. And let's just, we had a health check on you with the quality of that last album. And we need a health check on Glenn. Every day he's giving updates from Google Land. And this time he said, good morning, Google Land. If I have to say that one more time, I might jump out my office window. This is April 24th edition of Core Update Notes. We are now a whopping 51 days into the core, March Core Update. Let's just give Glenn some appreciation. Yes. If you want to know what's happening with this Core Update, just go follow at Glenn Gabe on X Twitter. We're going to have fi- wrap it up here with how's Google doing? How's Google doing? Segment. Okay. From Lily Ray, she retweets something from Paul Kopfner. And Paul says, Google knowingly or still knowingly puts kids at risk. Zero evidence stem cells help autism and they could do harm. And it gives number one search result. And I would say feature snippet for stem cells for autism. So there's uh, the fact of if you search for stem cells, autism, which you would think is your money, your life subject, it says they are used in the treatment of autism, even though apparently that is not the case. Not great. Then Lily Ray at Lily Ray NYC says, can you imagine any other page of the internet ranking prominently for the keyword best dental insurance with an answer literally saying, I don't know, sorry, this isn't helpful. And she pulls up a Cura listing that says, what is the best individual dental plan or insurance in NYC? The top rated article is, I have no clue or knowledge about the dental insurance policies here in the United States. So that's what's being served up to people. Wow. Okay, probably the best one yet. Holy crap, this is amazing. This is from Lily Ray again. This is amazing catch by Jake P. Hoffman. The first QR answer ranking number one in Google's discussions and forums module for the query health benefits of cocaine oh my God. is actual conspiracy <laughs> madness, essentially suggesting that cocaine can prevent you from getting sick, that all murderers are victims, <laughs> and that the user was able to take over 10 years of maximum level doses that would have killed many others. Read this thing. <laughs> Tables, put this up on the screen. There is, this is something that should never be surfaced ever. <laughs> It says mental health benefit would be able to become aware of the body's ability to starve and stay awake continually with minimal movement and deeply concentrated trance of analysis and detailed thought of the narrowest topics demonstrated by human thinking and certainly losing on the opportunity of for focus, continuous mental exploration. It's nonsense. This is like somebody that is like Ted Kaczynski. And they're anonymous. And I thought the whole thing was about experience and expertise and authority. I like think this person might have. Also, that. if the skin had any imperfection or wound, then the cocaine's fluid releasing effect and drying the skin always speedily would W U D restore skin to a repaired state. So that's what you need. You're sick. There you go. Cocaine for your flesh wounds. Yeah. And then lastly, how's Google going from Lily Ray? She says, position number four for best melatonin gummies in discussions and forums. <laughs> the question on Reddit was best melatonin, no headache or grogginess when waking up. The answer might be the stupidest answer ever. It says jacket. Who is going to wear a coat to bed? <laughs> Imagine thinking that you, somebody's looking for melatonin sleep help and the answer you give somebody is to wear a coat to bed, Jess. <laughs> Wait, what does it say? It's a jacket. Yeah, people gonna- Wait, what? Oh. Two words. That's it. And organic, what's happening in social body? First up, TikTok has started testing its Instagram competitor, TikTok Notes, in Canada and Australia. They said it's in the early stages of the rollout. It's a dedicated space for photo and text content. Will it hit the U.S.? I don't know. Will it matter in nine months? No idea. If they don't change the name to TikTok, I will not ship it. I don't want to talk about it. Do you hate the reply, like, and share buttons on X? No. I don't think many people do, but they can rejoice because the swipe to respond functionality is coming and with it probably the removal of those buttons. So if you care or want to see what it looks like, we'll have a GIF up up on the screen. It's 
basically you swipe left to do a couple things, swipe right to do a couple of other things. And then in the example that was shared, those buttons are still there, but I don't know why you would have Am them. I old that I don't like swiping things? I hate it. I always I swipe like the wrong buttons. way in Gmail and archive everything. Like I don't mean to do it. It's annoying, but they're trying to simplify Here's a more interesting thing happening with X. They are taking steps to a video first platform and have a dedicated app for X videos on smart TVs. So it's not an X app for your TV where you would just use X, but it's for the video content hosted on the platform. I like interesting this. move. I like this because of the fact that they're trying to go into content. I just feel like if I open this up, I'm going to open up the X app on my TV and everything's going to be about the First Amendment. I'm going to have to be like, get All the me videos, out of here. you think? Yeah. yeah. Get me out of here. We like, need good content for this to work. Correct. Like, yeah. if we could put our, our stuff up there, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's neat. People are saying it looks a lot like YouTube, but I mean, I, there's only so many ways you can really present videos. According to Social Media Today, which is reporting on some app researcher data, which <laughs> the article notes is not 100% accurate, but can be indicative of things. Um, the daily active users on threads is surpassing that. That's not true. Twitter? That's not true. I don't know. In the U.S. I think, I believe this is U.S. specific. So it's something. I don't know. You can read the whole thing if you're interested. Maybe Taylor posted a thread last week. I just don't understand. I, like, I, it's one thing if Twitter's it, it might, usage is going it down, might be but true threads because is going up. If you're on any of the meta platforms, it's you get these like fake things where it's like you yeah. got a message and you're like, what's the message? And you're like, somehow on threads. You're like, get me off of threads. Oh. How do I get back to where I was? Yeah, maybe. They're trying really hard. They're yeah. really, really trying It's not trying working hard. for me. But they're saying that the usage rate is 21% lower for Twitter than it is for threads in the US. I don't know. I don't know. There is no way. There's no chance. Yeah. That's what it says from uh, Aptopia. Hmm. So you can look that up if you're interested. <laughs> All right, moving on. There are more features for creator subscriptions on Instagram that they have added some more data for creators with what they're calling Sticker Tap Insight. Um, they shared a screenshot of a notification where a creator got to see how many taps they got on a recent story or sticker on a recent story. I feel like that's nice if you want to see how your creative choices are boosting engagement. How's your Instagram going? I haven't checked it. Mm. Yeah. Do you think it's going well? How's your LinkedIn going? Couldn't tell you. How's your ex gone? I have an ex. How's your Facebook gone? <laughs> I had to accept a friend request from our data manager, uh, Jack, today. So I, okay. I've logged into Facebook. I just want to make sure you are yeah. up to date with all the cutting edge information. I done told you. I report the social news, but I don't yeah. use any of it. Um, but <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> what else are they doing for creators? Uh, they've expanded the subscription stories teaser display. So it'll show non-subscribers if a creator has posted a subscriber only piece of content and gives them the option to sign Ooh. up to view it, which I like. And um, they're also adding new ways to prevent screenshots and recordings to keep exclusive content exclusive. But the article didn't say what those are. So good luck to you. From TechCrunch, Meta has launched Llama 3. It is officially competing in the generative AI games with their launch of oh Llama 3. Oh my God. It's so annoying. This search thing that okay yeah. i posted about it last week mm -hmm. so there's a video I, i'm well you, i'm well aware i'm just here to yes queen you <laughs> you try to search for like so, like someone's profile or something and it comes up with this ai search and the answers are the worst i have ever seen the point that Shep is trying to make, though, is that Llama 3 does not have access to real-time data, so it's getting help from search engines, both Bing and Microsoft, and pulling that in, too. Apparently, Bing the search is up. That's <laughs> Google and Microsoft. Google and Bing? I can't talk. I and don't it's know on Facebook, too. Like, right. old people are going to be just searching for someone's profile and get, like, misinformation Facebook on Facebook. Facebook users are very upset with you right now. Old people? I'm, I'm on Facebook. But there's also old people mm. on Facebook <laughs> who just really don't want Lovely to Lovely old with people. AI. Meta also confirmed that it is expanding its test of the AI assistant tool to users in India and parts of Africa across WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger. So they're really leaning in. In this article, apparently Adam Masseri suggested creators should look to use generative AI to, quote, negotiate deals or write contracts or come up with ideas. I feel like that's bad advice, except maybe the last one. From Andrea Cruz at Andrea Cruz 92 she said LinkedIn is launching premium company pages. The service reportedly starts at $99 a month and uses AI to create content and boost the following. 
um, for premium pages. I think she means followers of premium pages. So there's also a TechCrunch article about it that said that AI content um, as well as other new tools will be involved. So some of the features that they're saying is um, you can view admins for premium pages, can view recent visitors, and then invite them to follow a page regardless of connection, which is a new thing. You can create call to action buttons, feature testimonials more prominently, have AI writing help, and a golden badge to verify. I don't know if that's worth $99 a month. Probably not, but maybe they'll tell us more about why it is. I mean, I think the biggest thing is like Elon changed the way that you talk about premium tiers where you get more visibility. Like you can cut all the AI garbage out of this. Like nobody cares about that. Mm -hmm. It's more like if you're going to show up more, that is the big deal. Have a verification yeah and kirk williams just put out a tweet saying he stopped his premium subscription he saw some views go down we'll see about that but go follow him ppc kirk on x if you want more on that but that's the number one thing is like if you're just like hey you get more visibility people pay people don't want the ai people aren't gonna pay for that no you can get that for free elsewhere and plug it in all right we'll go back to twitter to play us out real quick at best of dying twit the best of dying Twitter. Reposted. So Elon Musk tweeted, posted on X. Any accounts doing engagement farming will be suspended and traced to source. So Yeah, what is engagement farming? What is engagement Meanwhile, farming? Meanwhile, he put out that stupid meme of what's between L and K or L and H and L on your keyboard. He put the same engagement farming out. JK. You're, you're not on social media. That's the newest thing that's just <laughs> plaguing society. It's terrible. You're like, what's between H and the colon? Oh, take it out. <laughs> I hate that. What? And people, how does it engagement farming? People just comment on it like, oh, you got yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. So he's doing it. He should ban himself. He's doing it. And somebody asked Grok what engagement farming was and got some examples and they posted some things essentially trolling. But then one of the examples that Grok gave of engagement farming is replying to or engaging with posts with the intent of increasing one's own visibility. That's like literally the the point. No, that's like Neil Patel's thing is that you find somebody that is an influencer. You're the first one. You go respond to. It. I think it's Neil Patel. Maybe it's Grant Cardone. It's one of them. I just feel like in general, like that you don't. I mean, people do have no, things to say you, and like, want to say it, but like you, that you no, get it's involved. A thing. It's, a thing. it's like Gary V. Gary V. Might have been on. Might, I, t- I take everything back because Gary V. He's like, go find the people that you want to be like, and then just go respond to every comment and get up there at the top, have them like your stuff, and then you're gonna blow up. It was Gary V. I take it back. Got it. Well, that's very intense. Anyway, as Elon would say, grok rocks. So engagement farm away. And that brings us to our real life segment, straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for working hard or hardly working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work, good, bad, or otherwise. I don't know if this is new, but I was looking at the overview tab in Google ads at all my campaigns and they had this little section that sorted um, things by labels. So you could look at campaign li- labels, ad group labels, and keyword labels. That's awesome. And it looks at cost or clicks, impressions, and you could change. You could look at conversions, whatever. So I love labels. So I thought that was very exciting. Yeah. We use them a lot. So this is nice. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Shab. Working hard for me, I um, have to like sister brands or a parent brand and a child brand that are changing some names of some properties that they own. And so I wanted to find all the instances of those on both sites. So I was using Screaming Frog to run a custom search and it saved all of my custom searches. There were 12 of them from crawl to crawl when I changed to the URL and was able to do things really quickly. So thank you, Screaming Frog, for being awesome. In the new Google Ads interface, um, I know this is inevitable, like Marvel world or whatever they call it right isn't like a thanos thing i don't watch that stuff i don't know i don't know i know it's inevitable that it's coming and i'm trying to like embrace it and just get on the new google ads interface the product groups view is like non-existent you have to go to ad groups and i really hate it it's like whoever designed this has never used a shopping shopping ad yeah you never run shopping in your life and it is a disaster. This, I I should message Ginny or somebody, but this is a disaster. There is no product group anymore. 
you have to go to ad group and then you just have to find it. It sucks. Like that's a huge deal yeah. for e-com and they just missed it completely with this new design. And now for this week's cool tool. As a reminder, our cool tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners and is really, really cool. This week's cool tool offers ad support because platforms fall short. From Thomas Assel, he says, I built a custom PPC support and strategy advice chat GPT, and it's smart. For plus users only for now, let me know if you want the link to try it out. And basically, you can ask it to PPC questions. Some examples are how do you track conversions in Google Analytics? Why is my Google Analytics data not matching? That's a common question. So pretty cool if you have ChatGPT+. Plus. So if you want to try it, you just have to exit the man, um, and he'll get you a link to the tool itself. But we will get you to him. As always, we will have the link in our newsletter as well as on Discord. That's newsletter and community.marketingoclock.com respectively. So pick your poison and check it out. Now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week, an article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. This week's must-read marketing article of the week comes from our very own Jack Navarre over on Cyprus North. We have a guide. I'm going to call it the ultimate guide towards privacy for digital marketers, and it covers everything that you need to know because they're the right way to do things and a way to check a box. And you want to be that marketer that does things the right way. And Jack covers GDPR, how you can become compliant with everything, cookie consent, Google consent mode, and most importantly, the impact on marketing. And I feel like this is such a misunderstood aspect of owning a website that you can do all the things to become legally compliant, but there are also ways that you can do things to salvage as much marketing horsepower as possible. And Jack covers everything that you need to know. And it is why we just had somebody reach out this week Mm -hmm. and they're like, we need help with GTM. And it's like, you are an international company. You don't have any of this stuff, let alone set up correctly. Like you are breaking the law in every different which way that you could. So if you are interested in doing things properly and keeping as much possible tracking as you can, you can't keep everything. You can't keep anybody that hasn't been um, opted in. This is the go-to article for you. And of course, just like Jess said, you can see that over on community.marketingclock.com or newsletter.marketingclock.com or just com- or cypressnorth.com. cypressnorth.com. Go to our resources section. It is a huge document and you should take this, send it on over. And if you need any help at all on this, salvaging as much as you can for your marketing efforts, just give us a call. We can help you out. Thank you, Jack. And now on to our playlist of curated songs to work to. You can head over to playlist.marketingoclock.com to listen to Marketing a Playlist. As if you had to ask, I will be adding But Daddy, I Love Him by Taylor Swift. Jess, what will you be adding? I'm going with And It Stoned Me by Van Morrison. For me, it was not added to the playlist yet. I'm going to go with him, Wicked Game, top five song of all time. Definitely one of the best like top covers five. better than the original. Original is great. It is. Original is great. Covers Chris better. Isaac. Wicked game. Never heard of her. Get the get out Come of here. Come on. Get out of here. You have. You just don't know it. Get out of you here. You have. We're ending the show for good. This is the last show of, <laughs> this of Marketing Clock. That's the last straw. How have you not heard of I've Wicked heard of Game? Wicked the musical. I'll listen to it after this. It's the same. No, we need to listen to this now. Okay. Let's make this the longest show ever. I think we can get in trouble if this plays. 20 minutes later. All right. Shep just heard Wicked Game by Chris Isaac for the first time. Your thoughts? Uh, it was fine. It was nice. I like his style. It's I like no his suits. Dead Poet Society. It was good. Okay. Wow. Okay. Well, that, that was some I passion. We, I think we learned a lot. We, we, <laughs> we learned a lot Just here. Feel so sad. All right. That does it for today's show. <laughs> it's now officially not marketing clock. Thanks for listening. We miss you already. And we can't wait to see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock. 
If you're looking for more information on today's topic, head over to marketingoclock.com slash newsletter to receive every single article we cover. We share the news as it breaks in our Discord community. Head over to community.marketingoclock.com to join. Welcome to this week's Shoot in the Hack. We're after our famous Friday news show. We don't talk about marketing anymore. We just... Shoot the hack. And today we're back at it with everybody's favorite game. It's two types of people. Two types of people. <laughs> you said sure two different two types. types yeah. I almost said two <laughs> different types of people. Well, it is. It <laughs> it's is. the same, yeah. Because in this case, it's a binary option. You do one of the two things. Nobody in the world does both of the two things. Okay. okay? But we're is not it? going anywhere. No, we're it's just not talking travel, and seeing what type of person you are. Right. I mean, one I may hold off on. We'll, we'll see. So first up, you have a piece of raw b- broccoli in front of you. Do you eat just like the little leaves and the buds, or do you eat the do you eat the limbs off of it? Too? I don't eat raw broccoli. I love cooked broccoli. Okay, but you have raw broccoli in front of you. You have to eat it. Do you eat the little ranch and just the bush part? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so shop's eating just the bush. How about you? I want the stalk, too. I, that's where the crunch is. Okay. Tables? I want all of it. Wow. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just the leaves. You are? I just like the little they leaves. They just get stuck on your teeth, and then you just discard know, the stem? It tastes so much different. When you eat the, the, the whatever it's called, limbs, mm-hmm. it just has a different taste. Yeah, it's variety. I buy it frozen, and I just get the florets. Mm. No stems. That's a good mm. hack. That is, yeah. <clears throat> Okay, trying to pretend it's not two types of people. Okay, you do the laundry. Shep, I know you're going to excuse no, yourself. Please. I do laundry now. Do I got laundry? first floor laundry. Oh my gosh. Explain. We moved it into, we had like a handicap accessible shower on the first floor in the bathroom that we never used. And I put my washer dryer in it. It's been like three weeks. Okay. Don't you see how clean this frock is? <laughs> <laughs> you do the laundry. Mm-hmm. Do you instantly put it away or do you kind of like let it linger around? Some people like do it, take it right out of the dryer, put it right away. I'm that person. I can't let it pile up. Jess, your thoughts? I've had laundry baskets on my bedroom floor for two weeks now. See, that surprises me. It's clean I wouldn't think you would be like that. I don't want to be like that. I just am. I'm the same. <laughs> for what it's worth. Thank like, God. Like, okay. especially because I do a lot of laundry at night yeah. and I get like kids laundry. I don't want to go wake them up. Mm-mm. And then it's like, now I just set this thing down, like in my room off to the side. I know I have to go put it away, but like, it's So you there. fold it, but then don't put it away. Oh, no, I don't even I don't fold, fold it. it. I just no. take it out because I have like the girls laundry, the boys laundry, like my laundry. I like cycle the girls out, go put the boys in, but I can't like go instantly put it away. So then I'm like, well. Oh. And kids' laundry jam. is so much smaller. You got a full, it's just so much more in the basket. This outfit that I'm wearing today came straight out of a clean laundry basket oh, on my that's floor. A flex. I, just I can't. can't let it go more than a couple days, but it's because it is my least favorite chore folding and putting away laundry. So I just like need to have it behind me or it will bother me. Yeah, my stuff I have to like take it and just dump it right on my bed so that I have to do it. Then and you have to do it if it's on the bed. I have stuff in the bed with the laundry on. Thank Happens. you. Yes. Tables, how about you? I can't never. I just kick it. I have a king size bed. I just kick it to the side. Move it over there. (laughs) Push it to the side. Uh, So actually, we'll take it out. For the most part, we'll fold it. But because we do so much laundry at once, we'll just put the folded laundry back in the basket and put Mm. that away later. So you're you're making work out of the dryer. There are people that use soy sauce with sushi, and then there are people that use soy sauce as a condiment. On random food? Uh, with uh, anything you want. What type of person are you? When do you use soy sauce? I use it in a mean green bean casserole Okay. and with Asian food. Okay. I only ever use it when I'm making homemade fries. How do you use that? It's like in the recipe for the batter to put the breading on. Okay. I, like I'm not a soy sauce lady. Tables? I pretty much only use it with sushi. Okay. That's it. <laughs> soy sauce is my new ketchup. Really? Yeah. Well, you Tater don't like tots, ketchup, right? So soy sauce. You don't There's like already soy sauce. salt on them. Give me more. I need more salt. <laughs> it like, doesn't I like crave taste it. great by itself. It tastes amazing. It's so salty and like vinegary. Ugh. It is 10,000 times better than ketchup. Ketchup, disgusting. I don't like ketchup. Do you put it on a burger? I, I, what we need is we need a creamier soy sauce. Oh, we soy cream. We need a little cream in there. Ugh. Like a nope. little mayo soy. I don't like that at all. Um, this is a not soy-oly. 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so are you going to like carry soy sauce packets in your purse? You're going to be one of those? Probably. Got to get a purse. <laughs> Just first thing I'm putting in. I could see it. Let's talk butter. I love butter. Do you Yes. keep your butter out room temperature in a tin or do you keep it in the fridge? If I were to have real butter, we're talking real butter, stick of butter. Right? I mean, I'm going to let you explain. Okay. Because I have like the, I can't believe it's not butter, like spread, whatever. That is just in a tub in my fridge. But if you're going to have a real stick of butter, it should be in a container. It should be unwrapped, not in the paper, in a container with a lid on the counter at room temperature, ready to spread. So what are you? Well, I don't have real butter in my home. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, are you? Like I have very like strong opinions. opinions on butter, but yeah, I don't. I don't know. One more thing on my counter. I just get the olive oil stuff, whatever. But there is something to be said for real butter, and it should be at room temperature. Okay. I'm a convert. I remember being in college and living in a house with a bunch of girls, and I could not believe people left butter out on their counter. Now I have an 11 month old who, much like Oprah, loves bread. Okay. <laughs> she wants toast with butter. All day long, she like carries it around in her hand throughout the house. We just went on that long road trip. I was passing her back slices of bread like she was a duck in her car seat. So I got to keep the butter on the counter so I can spread it quick yeah. when she's got to hanker mm-hmm. in for her loaf. You don't want to like bury Schwartz with that. No. <laughs> little crumbles of butter. You, you hate smooth. to see it. You hate yeah. to see it. If it's yeah. refrigerated, you cannot spread it. Like at restaurants, when they give you the little packets, you got to warm them in your hand so it's easy to spread. You just take raw butter in Well, your no, hands? you keep it in the foil oh. and warm it up and then you take I it out. You're buttering <laughs> up with your hands. It's I'm real fun to eat with. I'm the same exact person. I was like a bin, like whatever. Country oil, crock. Like whatever. Yeah, country crock. Yeah, yeah. Garbage was. And mm-hmm. instead, now I'm just out. We have waffles all the time, toast all the time. And... It is the best. Mm-hmm. Why don't people put, like, this should be a PSA. We see all the stuff like don't text and drive. It should be like, no, put your butter on the counter and yeah. your life gets better. And I have really fond memories of like making toast over the years and watching my husband try to butter the toast <laughs> with the hard it's butter. And he like out. freaks out trying to butter toast with cold butter. Like, it's impossible. I have all these like memories of him like, Freaking out. Yeah. And then you like put it back in the toaster oven and I'm like, maybe it'll melt and I can spread Ugh, it more. The sound. No, yeah, no. Chills. Bread, no. Tables, how about you? Well, I think it depends if you have air conditioning and what season it is. Because if it's in the summer, <laughs> there's a chance it can melt. I don't like that. I prefer it in the refrigerator, although it is easier to spread when it's out. Tables, we're not talking about taking the butter in the car. <laughs> yeah. you, you, that's never happened to you? You can't no. dip tortilla you to, like, chips do in it. And Sometimes I keep it too close to a pot and it sort of melts a little bit. But yeah, it's gross. Ooh, that's yeah. A good yeah. Dip tortilla chips? Have you ever done that? No. Instead of salsa or queso. You don't even have butter. It doesn't matter. Even butter <laughs> substitute works for you. Just, oh, a tortilla chip and butter dip. Oh, my. Try it. It's good. I do have a really good butter story. I'll make it quick. Okay. <laughs> we were at this bed and breakfast. I might have told this. And we were with these foodies. So we're sitting at a table with two other people that we don't really know. We're the only people at the bed and breakfast. And they're like, oh, the bolognese. And talking <laughs> about the food at all the wineries. Like, total foodies. And we were, like, 24 years old and broke. And had no business at this bed and breakfast. And I'm like talking to them about the bolognese and eating what I think is cheese on my plate. And we get up and Eddie goes, you are eating butter. <laughs> um, you didn't taste the difference? No, no, I just thought it was like a, like like a, a brie. Like, a brie. <laughs> With breakfast. Wow. You should tell uh, Larry Chassie to do that with his bed and breakfast. He's just got a bed and breakfast. Oh, Aww. I would love to visit. Yeah. I, I don't think he'll have uh, little cheese butters for you, though. Yeah, he will now. <laughs> okay, well, let us know how you keep your butter. It's a big point of contention, and we'll see you next week. You know what time it is. It's officially marketing o'clock. Settle in, sit back, keep it locked.